Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. I'm here to share with you tips, tricks, and techniques to help you become a wood, better wood turner. So if that's what you're interested in, come on in. Okay, so you've been uh, turning for a while. You've turned a few bowls and you want to take your bowl turning up to the next level. So in this video, we're going to turn a, a, footed, a footed bowl. It does not take any fancy power tools. Uh, I'll, I'll show you how to do that. And we're not, we're not going to concentrate on bowl turning as much as we are just working on the feet. Uh, this one is about 3 8 inch wall thickness. Yours might be thicker or thinner uh, based on, on your design. I prefer to use a recess for this type of bowl, so I'm going to use my recess, uh, shop made recess tool. I'll have a link, link to that above. Thanks to the longtime uh, viewer Glenn Crandall in my earlier video where I used a larger template and I was having an awkward way of having to mark it, he suggested why don't I drill holes at the intersection of the, the 60 degree lines and, and the circles. And I thought, wow, that's a fabulous idea. So there I am. Makes it much easier to, to mark it with a pencil. It was important that we left this, this hole from the live center to make it easy to square up this, true up this bowl when we mounted on this uh, vacuum, vacuum chuck. I've drawn a line here. That's going to be the outside of the feet. Going with the traditional design of the feet being about one, the diameter of the base of the bowl being about one third of the diameter of the bowl. Uh, this is going to be pretty close. I also marked, uh, this is the inside uh, depth of the bowl. I could have probably gone a little bit deeper. This is where the bottom of the bowl is going to be. So this distance right here is additional uh, depth I can go from my recess uh, to make that a little bit deeper. However, I do want to have it somewhat rounded on the bottom so it will match the, the flow of the bowl. I want to do a little more shaping on this to get it closer to where it's going to finally be. So I'm going to bring this cu curve in up under here and then I'm going to take out some of this excess. I'm going to leave those reference pencil marks, they're very important. Put that reference mark back so it just may disappear. Alright, that looks good. Got just a little bit of a bump here in the middle I need to probably shape out. Okay, there's different ways to mark the, the feet. I'm using three feet because it'll always balance uh, even when this dries and goes oval or becomes organic, just like a three-legged stool. You could index this. Uh, if you're used to using the indexing system on your lathe, you could use that. Uh, if you had an indexing wheel, you could use that. Heck, you could just sort of approximate because they don't have to be that precise. But this 
This to me looks like the easiest, easiest way to do it. Now I want to have the one leg centered on the side grain because that's going to be one of the strongest legs when you go to cutting it. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and mark that just a little bit off, off of center. And now I can line this up. Okay, now in the earlier video, I said we're going to make these legs, I think, three quarters of an inch, so put a line three eighths inch on each side. And viewer Michael Wartman made the following suggestion Mike, when you're laying out the feet, you can save work. Instead of defining the center and then offsetting it three eighths to each side, define one inch and then offset it to one side by three quarters. Like, duh, what a great idea, Michael. Thanks for that, that suggestion. So I'm going to get, a, get my ruler. Mark three eighths of an inch on the outside each, each one of these feet. Mark it a little carefully. Hard line. And then we come up with that by three eighths of an inch at the top. Or three quarters of an inch, rather. And then the last one. And then we're coming a little bit on each one. We'll center it. Get that angle. We shape that foot. That's the way we can come in. And then look at it and say, yep, that's the way I want. So this is the area that's got to be carved out. But I've got to come in deeper here by uh, at least a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to put it back on the lathe and take care of that. I've got a little depth left on my hook dovetail scraper, so I think that's the approach that I'm going to use to take away some of that. Almost the depth that I want. A little bit left over for finishing. I've used a profile gauge, put it right down the middle of the bowl. Now you can see that I've got a pretty even profile down through here, and it and it's, as the eye comes across, it meets at the bottom, so that's good, and the, and the feet look good. So I'll set that aside. I'm using a glove to kind of protect. There's, uh, if you've got comfortable carving tools you're comfortable with, use those, power or, or otherwise. For me, I found that the uh, coping saw tends to work fairly well. I'm using a glove to kind of protect myself a little bit. Don't go all the way down to the uh, bowl edge. Leave a little bit of room for final sanding. And I've kind of drawn these in, these teeth in, uh, just a little bit.
Okay, I've got a, a rotary tool, like a, like a Dremel, with a high-speed steel uh, burr. It's the same one I use on my uh, decorating Dremel texturing system. So I just barred it from that, and we're just going to brace ourselves with thumb and bring it to us as we remove some of the excess wood. Circular motions probably work best. Y'all are probably all familiar with the two inch and three inch sanding sanding pads. Uh, Wood Turner's Wonders also got a one inch one, which is great for the insides of some boxes and for detail work like like this. I'm still gonna have to be careful with it, but uh, I think it'll do the job. I'm gonna have to turn on the uh, vacuum. When you finish turning your uh, green bowl, it's going to warp. You, uh, what I do in Atlanta area is I put it in a uh, brown paper bag and let it, let it dry for about a week. Here it's humid. I don't put any uh, uh, shavings in there or they tend to, to mold. Uh, your mileage might be different. After it, after it dries, uh, and I weigh it to see when the weight uh, quits, uh, quits moving, and then I add a few coats of my favorite finish, Min Wax, Min Wax Antique Oil. And then I buff it. If you're interested more in just bowl turning, you might want to check out the uh, link to this bowl turning playlist. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here. What else can I do? What else can I do? I don't know. <laughs> That's good.